Direct from the heart of Midland, this is the April 2016 edition of MPS Today. My name is Scott Cochran, Auxiliary Education Curriculum Specialist for MPS and host of the show. We have a great show for you today. You'll hear about the Kindergarten Young Fives program from teacher Christina Wheel and Carpenter Elementary Principal Jeff Lauer. Our high school counselors will give you all of the latest news and notes in the counselor's corner, and then we'll learn more about the Kindergarten Young Fives from curriculum specialist Luann Bensinger. Now remember that you can find all of our programming, including graduation, select athletic events, and concerts on our YouTube site. Just search for Midland Public Schools on YouTube or go to the district website, www.midlandps.org, and click on the YouTube button. Well, now let's welcome our guests to the studio. Uh, from Carpenter Elementary, we have Principal Jeff Lauer and teacher Christina Will. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. Bet. Well, Christina, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and what you've done for the district. I've been working for Midland Public Schools for 17 years. Mm -hmm. um, when I started out, I started out in kindergarten. I spent a couple of years in first grade and then came back okay. to kindergarten. Uh, at that point, we started an all-day kindergarten program, um, moved to Carpenter, and then just last year I was asked to take on the Kindergarten Young Fives program. Yeah. And the way we teach kindergarten has changed quite a bit over the years, hasn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. What do you love about working with kindergartners? Uh, they're just so genuine. Um, good or bad, they're going to let you know how they feel about it. Um, but I really love just winning them over and seeing the excitement on their face when we explore something new or, you know, you can get the best compliments from five-year-olds. Yeah, <laughs> I bet. And you see tremendous growth over the course of the school year, too. Absolutely. Yeah, great. Now, Jeff, what, uh, tell us a little bit about being a principal. What's your, what do you look forward to every day? Well, uh, probably the most exciting thing is the chance to make a difference for kids. And I'm fortunate at Carpenter. I've got a great staff. They are very talented. I've got a great group of parents that are supportive and they're, they're there for the kids. They cooperate and, and work well with the teachers. And uh, that makes my job a little bit easier. I get to go and, and visit classrooms where there's a lot of exciting things going on, a lot of energy, and a lot of good things happening. It's a great way to spend your day. Sure, sounds like it. Well, now, Christina, uh, tell us a little bit about kindergarten young fives. You know, students at that age, what are you looking to accomplish by the end of the school year? Our biggest thing is we want to get them ready for kindergarten. And for students, that can be a wide var variety of skills that they need to work on. Sometimes it's social emotional skills, sometimes it's behavioral skills, sometimes it's academic skills. So we do lots of different activities to build all kinds of behavioral skills, emotional skills, coping skills, um, academic skills. So what I do with each kid varies based on what they need in order to be successful in kindergarten. So it almost sounds like you're saying it's, it's very uh, personalized or specialized depending on the needs of each individual student. Is that right? I feel like it is. Uh, I feel like that's my job to make sure that each child is ready whatever it is that they need yet to be ready for kindergarten. And there's obviously an academic component. You mm -hmm. mentioned that and that's mm -hmm. probably more but like reading, writing, and math focused. Yes. But then there's also, you mentioned social emotional. So mm -hmm. Tell us more about that. What's that all about? Um, well, we work on coping skills and what do we do when we can't get our way or what do we do when someone, you know, hurts us, whether it's physical or emotionally hurts us. How do we respond to that? Yeah. Um, that's a big part of, because typical four and five year olds that I teach, they don't really have the skills necessary to monitor that for themselves so we have to teach and model and help them to understand this is a socially acceptable way to display your anger or to show that you're upset with somebody. So it's okay to feel that way but it's what you do next that really Exactly. Yeah. So you must spend a lot of time on those sort of things as well. We sure do. And <laughs> lots so the, of modeling. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> lots of modeling and lots of patience, right? <laughs> and so the goal is by the end of the year they're ready to move on to the next phase. Exactly. Socially, emotionally, and academically. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Now what's a typical day like with kindergarten young fives? Um, we do lots of play, which uh, to me play is one of the best ways for kids to learn. They just don't even realize that they're learning when they play. Um, so we do have in the morning uh, center type activities that are more directed. Um, so there are things that I do with them in groups to help them co with their coping skills, whether academic or behavioral. Um, then we have lunch at school, just like all the other kids. Okay. In the afternoon, it's a little bit more open and um, that we have some time for the, them to just have quiet time. Some of the kids actually fall asleep during that time. Sure. Um, and that's okay, because that's one of the ways that we can see that they're still growing. And that's a big difference right there, mm -hmm. right there between kindergarten young fives and what comes next, right? I believe, yes. A little yep. more uh, freedom for them to, to maybe rest if they need to or. Right, okay. 
Yep. After um, quiet time, and some of them sleep, and when they sleep, I let them sleep. Sure. Um, after quiet time, we have open centers where they get to choose where they would like to learn that day. And I, my um, paraprofessional and I also will call them over to work on specific skills okay. that each child might need. A little that less time. structure, but mm -hmm. be more targeted and focused, too. It's right. Like. Yep. Okay. Um, then after that, we always uh, get some recess time. We try to get outside even during the winter time. Of course. Um, come back in for a snack, a story, and it's time to go home. Yeah. Now, I'm sure a lot of parents wonder, what about those days where you can't go outside? If it's storming or it's, it's Michigan, so it's super cold or super windy or super something. I mean, what, what, do, you, what do the kids those do? Those days happen. I still try to give them just that unstructured play time. They really need that time to or release. Free time inside. Mm -hmm. Yep, and we'll do it inside. Sometimes we do some brain break type activities where we'll do some dancing or singing, um, just something to get them out of the normal what we usually do. Yeah. Does Mr. Lauer ever come down and play guitar so they can sing? And dance? I'll have to offer that <laughs> next time. <laughs> I hear he likes to, to play the guitar and drums. And so. Probably could do that, right? Oh, I'd love to do it. <laughs> now, Jeff, let me ask you a little about. You know, I'm sure there's folks that wonder about young fives. You know, they're kindergartners, but they're younger uh, than everybody else in the building. You know, how do we make sure that things go well for them, you know, in the hallway, at lunchtime, on the playground, that sort of thing? Oftentimes in the elementary setting, the biggest concern is, you know, the older kids, the fourth and fifth graders. Yeah. Our structure for lunch and playground uh, time is that the upper L has their own time and the lower L has their time. And so the young fives, uh, kindergarten students, will go out with the lower L group of kids. They go down to lunch just a little bit early. Okay. It takes them a little bit of time to get things coordinated, yeah. especially in the winter time when they've got all the gear to go <laughs> and, and get that out. I bet that takes some time to get them ready. Right just a time. little bit. You know, that's one of the skills we practice. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. important for self-help skills to be learned too, so. The classroom has additional paraprofessional support through our Title I program because we are Title I school-wide. Okay. Um, so there's a lot of adult supervision to make sure that kids are getting along all right and. You know, if an incident occurs where a student has a disagreement with another, they'll come down and visit me and we'll talk it out. Sure. And it's just another part of that learning process of what do we do when we're having a conflict, when we don't agree with somebody, when somebody took the ball that we thought we, we should have. Yeah. You know, and it's, um, you know, it's a great learning experience and uh, having spent time at all levels, including high school, i much rather deal with that kind of an issue than <laughs> some of the others you can have. Yeah, bigger kids, bigger problems sometimes, no right? Yeah. Well, it, is, it sounds like there's a couple things going on. So you're saying that the, the kindergarten young five students are doing, be, are in the hallway or the lunchroom or outside at a different time than their students. Mm -hmm. So they're not necessarily in, in, in contact during the school day as much with others. And then also that there's more adult support too going on. Is that right? Absolutely. Okay. Well, what's next for kindergarten young fives? I mean, what are, you know, I know teachers, and you're always planning something new and, and exciting. So what, what, is there something different that's happening, or what, what, is, what are your upcoming plans? You know, my kids are just really starting to get into real, like, academic tasks. So one of the things that okay. we've just recently started is reading workshop in our classroom, which is amazing with five-year-olds that they're reading books already. Sure. Um, we're also getting ready to start one of our P PYP units on communication. Um, again, just to review those skills on how do you problem solve when something happens, how do you communicate effectively with someone, especially when you don't agree, um, and how to share. <laughs> sure, that's a big deal. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> last question for you. What would you say is a, a, a way a, a parent can maybe know if their young person is ready for kindergarten, young fives, and how, how would, what would they want to be looking at? You know, a couple of things that you can do is you can talk to your child's preschool teacher. They are always a good wealth of information about, you know, what they feel, how they feel this child might fit into mm -hmm. a regular kindergarten classroom or if they might need another year of growth. Um, the other thing you can do is kind of look at social, emotionally, how do they behave? Do they separate easily from parents? Do they have trouble with that? Do they still need a nap? Sometimes that's a good sign that perhaps sure. they're not quite ready for that full day because a whole day of kindergarten is a long time. It's exhausting. Too, yes, right? it's it is. It's a lot of work for them, right. mentally and physically. And, and physically, yeah. yeah. So, you know, look at those characteristics and it's really not quite as much about the academics, although if they don't have the academics, the, the Kindergarten Young Fives program is a good place for them, but it's, that's not always the only place where children need to grow in order to have a successful sure. kindergarten year. Okay. And last question for you, Jeff. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the Carpenter Elementary Kindergarten Young Fives. So does that mean it's only for students in the Carpenter region? Oh, absolutely not. It's, it's housed at Carpenter, but we serve uh, students all throughout the district. Okay. They're all transported to our school from, uh, from all over the, the, the city uh, school system. And uh, we're, we're 
full at 25 this year and uh, have a, a waiting list continuing to grow for next year and we look forward to having the opportunity to have this program grow. So it's important that parents know it's not just if you live in the Carpenter neighborhood. That's right. It, anybody from Midland Public Schools can take advantage of the program. Absolutely. All right, great. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, Jeff and Christina, thank you very much for coming to talk with us about Kindergarten Young Fives. It sounds like a great program. A lot of work, I'm sure, but a lot of fun, too. It Absolutely. is. Thank you. All right, you bet. Well, up next is our Counselor's Corner, and then we'll hear more about the Kindergarten Young Fives program. So stick around for more MPS Today right after this. I dare you. I dare you to change the world. Yeah, you. Getting that college education. I dare you to be somebody important. Like be a teacher. Or a reality TV star. I dare you to stand up here. To call the shots. To be a role model. An inspiration. An innovator. To be a teacher. Think you can change my life? Make me excited about science like you? Have a career that really means something? Then do it. I dare you. Welcome to this month's edition of Counselor's Corner. I'm Jill English and this is Lori Halberg and we're here today to give you information across the district for all things happening in the high school counseling offices. If you happen to have an eighth grader, the time is quickly approaching for their transition to the high school. To help with that transition, there will be a new student orientation. It will be held on May 18th at Dow High at 6 o'clock in the evening and at Midland High it will be held in August. For any students who plan to take the ACT on June 11th, the deadline to register for that test on ACT's website is May 6th. While we're on the topic of registering, if a student plans to take an online class this summer through Midland Public Schools, please check the district website for registration information. You may contact the counseling office at each high school for more information. Before seniors finish on May 27th, there are a couple of items they need to complete. The first is a senior exit form. This form allows the district to track what each student's plans are for the following year. Students will comment whether their plans are a college and which college they plan to attend, if they're going into the military or right into the working world. Students will also write down how much scholarship money they have been offered and this will be from the school they plan to attend and any other school they have um, accepted or been offered money from. It is also important for seniors to log into Parchment one more time to request to have their final transcript sent to the college they will be attending. They can make that request at any time and the transcript will be sent sometime in June when all final transcripts have been updated. If a student does not send a final transcript to the college, then they could be dropped from their registered classes or possibly lose financial aid and scholarship money. So this is a really important step for them to remember. Lastly, we'd like to remind seniors and their parents to watch their attendance carefully. Don't forget, if you exceed 12 absences, whether they are excused or unexcused, you will have to take final exams and pass the exam with a 70% or higher in order to pass the class. This is it for this edition of Counselor's Corner. Check back next month when we'll have more information for you. Morning, Gary. We are GetSchooled.com. You want a college education, don't you? You know you do. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but I don't know where to start. That's why we're here. We're free, handsome. Oh, I think we're breathtaking. And here to guide you through every step of the way, starting with attendance. <laughs> Gary, financial aid forms. Biology homework, Chief. Got this. <coughs> Is that brand? <laughs> Colleges love extracurricular activities. Well, uh, chess really isn't my thing. I got this. Doesn't matter. Go ahead. Picking a college, man. You and us. Go together like tacos and Tuesday. And I love tacos. 
Phillips, fire and ice. Those don't really go together. Go to GetSchool.com for more info. Welcome back to MPS Today. Now we're going to welcome to the studio Luann Bensinger, our curriculum specialist who works with our Kindergarten Young Fives program. Uh, Luann, welcome to the show. Thank you, Scott. You bet. Now, Luann, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and what you've done for the district over the years. I've been with our district for 25 years. I have taught in the classroom for 24 years throughout MPS and other districts and then have been in the administration area for uh, six years now. Okay. And during that time, I have taught kindergarten and first grade, uh, second grade, third grade. Yeah. So have a lot of experience in the early years for, kinder for elementary and kindergarten. Yeah, and I'm sure you must enjoy working with students at that age. Absolutely. It's a lot of fun. Uh, well, tell us a little bit about the kindergarten Young Fives program and how that might be different than a traditional kindergarten program. Our Young Fives program was really established with the need that we saw within our community and the communication we had from parents looking for a mm -hmm. program that would help their students um, develop more skills both emotionally, academically, socially um, to get better prepared for coming to kindergarten. We also saw a gap as we saw the state change the age requirements for yeah. kindergartners where we used to have that December 1st date, five before December 1st, and they slowly moved that back to now we're at five before September 1st. So this was an opportunity also for those students to be able to have that um, public school or school experience prior to kinder going into formal traditional kindergarten. Sure. Uh, it's a full school year, just uh, the same calendar as everybody else. That's correct. Yeah. They follow the very same calendar as all the rest of our MPS students. And it, is there anything different about state requirements for the program from other classes? There really is not any other different requirements um, other than if they do have those birthdays um, after mm -hmm. September 1st and before December 1st, they would have to have a waiver to start which that information is available at the school or uh, on our website. Okay, so we have uh, kind of frequently asked questions, information on the website they can check Correct, out to, we right? do, and that would be in the parent section. And under kindergarten, you would also find the kindergarten young fives information as well. All right, great, we can direct parents there. Um, what about the young five kindergarten program? How did it get started? Um, as I mentioned, yeah. we had a lot of requests from our parents um, and even our teachers as well about a, the need of a program to help children um, further develop those skills of social, emotional, academic before entering kindergarten. And we were hearing enough that we decided that we would put feelers out yeah. some more and we really had a great response from our community that the need was there and filled a classroom pretty quick that first sure. year so well and there have been a lot of changes over the years right I mean we we're teaching more and more content to students at a younger and younger age that's true by the direction of the state and then we're also required now we're moving from used to be a lot of kindergarten classrooms were half day and now they're all full day and uh, so it's nice that we can offer a variety of experiences for students. That's true. And when you look at when we were running half day programs, mm -hmm. really we had the curriculum that needed a full day program. And that was part of why we moved to a full day kindergarten. Sure. And then with our Young Fives program, that also being a full day program, um, but allowing for that developmental um, input that we need to have for those young children. Now, how would you describe the content of what students learn a little bit more specifically? We really have a um, program that is much more individualized to look at those students, mm -hmm. to look at all that whole child and see where it is that they need to further that development to be prepared for kindergarten. Um, so they have language arts, math, um, social studies, right. Uh, science as well as um, all auxiliary classes mm -hmm. they attend as well. So meaning they'll get the gym and Spanish, uh, music and one other? Art. And art as well, <laughs> yes of course. Yes, so they receive that so it's really a very balanced day for them mm -hmm. and opportunity for them to explore uh, many parts of the educational curriculum. Yeah. Now we hear a lot about assessment in schools and, and how are, do we assess our kindergarten young five students? You know, how do we, how do we know 
what kind of progress they're making throughout the year? Um, Mrs. Wheel does mm -hmm. do assessments um, continuously, formative and summative assessments. So students have bubble tests or they're on the computer? Well, they're not doing bubble okay. tests. <laughs> <laughs> but we try to also yeah. make that developmentally appropriate for sure. them as well. Okay. But that gives Mrs. Wheel great information for seeing where those next needs are for those students and where sh maybe she will need to revisit some pieces to develop them further in areas. Sure. You know, it's funny because when we talk about assessment at the kindergarten young five level, it, it makes me think about, uh, we do assessments in our PE, our gym classes for kindergarten and young people as well, but it, it's not what people think about as a traditional assessment, right? I mean, it's a, Correct. it's a game or something fun where they make them go through a series of activities and then they can observe and figure out what they're able mm -hmm. to do. And that's a big part of it is the observation of mm -hmm. the young st child in order to see where they are and how they're developing. And as you heard Mrs. Wheel earlier, yeah. um, she really gave you good examples of how she does that in small groups and whole group and individualized time with those students from everywhere from the classroom to the playground. Sure. Mm -hmm. What would a parent think about when they're trying to decide if they want their child to go to kindergarten young fives or a traditional kindergarten classroom? What are the things they should be looking at? Well, when I talk to parents, I think it usually starts with them and yeah. they have a reason why they're asking those questions. Sure. You know, why is it, you know, are they ready or not ready? And then to move to if they've had that preschool experience to be able to have a conversation with their preschool teacher or if they're in a daycare setting, that daycare person would also most likely have some pretty yeah. good input. We also um, can talk with um, other people that you might be friends with, um, have a conversation even with one of the teachers, the Young Fives teacher, to see if that would be a good fit for them. Um, there's lots of ways to get input, but I think the first thing, there's an inkling within parents that yeah. they raise that question, are they ready? So you should trust that instinct and explore mm -hmm. that a little bit. Yes, trusting yeah. it and exploring it, exactly. Now we heard before, but it bears repeating, that the Kindergarten Young Fives program uh, is currently at Carpenter, but it's for anybody from Midland Public Schools. Yes, we call it, that's where we house the program, yeah. but it is a Midland Public School program. And all students from Midland Public Schools are um, welcome. We have students from most of our elementary yeah. schools, what would be their home schools. And where space is available, there's also schools of choice for our Young Fives program as well. Okay, great. Uh, one more time about where parents can find more information on our district website. If you go on to our website, yeah go to the parent bar at the top mm -hmm. and you will come to a page with a lot of information but in the green bar you will see kindergarten mm -hmm. and if you click on that and scroll down you will find all the information for our young five program as well as our kindergarten programs right, sure. as well um, so there's frequently asked questions um, our forms are on there that if they would like to register they can fill them okay. out there or go to Carpenter Elementary School to do that as well. Okay, and there'll be phone numbers in there for folks they can contact if they want to as well. Correct, yes, right. there will be. Great. Well, Luann, thank you very much. We appreciate you coming in to talk with us about Kindergarten Young Fives and for everything that you do for our students. Well, thank you, Scott. You it was bet. nice being here. Good. Well, that's our show for today. I remember that you can watch all of our programming on our YouTube site, and we'll look forward to seeing you next time on MPS Today.